He went to a workshop and they showed him all sorts of engines. At last he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. Oh, sir. Yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Edward, he called. Here's Percy. Will you show him everything? Percy soon learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. Weesh! went Percy. How beautifully you weeshed him, la Oh, said Percy, that's nothing. You should hear them in the workshop. You have to weesh loudly to make yourself heard. Next morning, Thomas arrived. Listen, Henry Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like little tank engines. Little tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. Oh, sir, yes, sir, please, sir, answered Percy. Thomas was anxious about Annie and Clarabelle, but both driver and conductor promised to take care of them. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. Sir Topham Hatt then told Percy, Edward, and Thomas that they could go and play. Edward and Percy played with the freight cars. Stop, 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 screamed the cars as they were pushed into their proper sidings. But the two engines laughed. Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call. After a great deal of shunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the switch so he could get back to the yard. Percy was being rather careless and not paying attention. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, and so the busy signalman forgot him. The switch was still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. Beep! Beep! He whistled in horror. Oh! groaned Gordon. Get out of my way! Percy opened his eyes, but Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's Hill without stopping. that he was tired but he couldn't stop he had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes I want to stop I want to stop he puffed the man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble so he kindly set the switch Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding ending in a big bank of earth he was too tired now to care where he went I want to stop! I want to stop! I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal, and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop, replied Gordon. Then Gordon helped pull Percy out from the bank. The two engines are now good friends, but Percy is always most careful when he goes out on the main line. Poor Henry didn't feel happy anymore. Never mind, whispered Percy. I'm glad you're home again. I like your whistling, but we just don't do it. No one mentioned whistles. Toby and Percy were sent to help and came as quickly as they could. That's James, didn't you know? It's James's shape, said Toby. But James is a splendid red engine, and you never see his paint dirty. Sir Topham Hatt met them. Toby shall have a new coat of paint. Please, sir, can Henrietta have one too, said Toby. Jammed whistles and burnt safety valves accidents, asked Percy innocently. No, indeed. High spirits. Might happen to any engine. 
But to come off the rails like Henry did, well, I ask you, is that right? When work was over, Thomas went to see the other engines. All their coats had been polished. Huh, said Gordon. Just look at us. Your driver will have to work fast to get you as smart as us. Everyone was getting very excited, and the drivers felt sure that Sir Topham Hatt would agree, as indeed he did. At long last, the rescue was complete. Percy took the tired workman home. Suddenly, all the lights went off. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Percy was very pleased. Three cheers for Mrs. Kindly, he called. Beep, beep, beep. They all whistled. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thomas, the tank engine, and his friends thought it was the best Christmas ever. And Mrs. Kindly could think of nowhere she would rather live than here, with them, on the island of Sodor. Hello, Thomas, whistled Percy. You look splendid. Oh, I don't know. I like my brown paint, said Toby. I've always been green. I wouldn't want to be any other color either, added Percy. Percy said no more. He just grinned at Toby. A large hopper was loading his freight cars full of coal. Thomas was still being cheeky. Watch out with those silly cars. Percy was worried, but he couldn't help laughing. Ha ha, chuckled Percy. You don't look really useful now, Thomas. You look really disgraceful. Thomas was grumpy in the shed that night. Percy was cross with Thomas for thinking he had made his paint dirty on purpose. Fancy a really useful blue engine like Thomas becoming a disgrace to Sir Topham Hatt's railway. Next day, Thomas was feeling more cheerful as he watched Percy bring his cars from the junction. Have a drink, said his driver. Then you'll feel better. Suddenly, Percy found that he couldn't stop. The buffers didn't stop him either. Oh, wailed Percy. Help! The buffers were broken, and Percy was wheel deep in coal. Now Percy has learned his lesson, too, he chuckled to himself. night, the two engines made up their quarrel. I didn't cause your accident on purpose, Thomas, whispered Percy. You do know that, don't you? Your green paint looks splendid again, too. In future, we'll both be more careful of coal. At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again. After James had finished his work, he went back to the yard. He clanks about like a lot of old iron, and he is so slow, he makes us wait. Old iron? Slow? The fireman was ready when Edward arrived. Percy works in the yard at the big station. He loves playing jokes, but they can get him into trouble. One morning, he was very cheeky indeed. Beep, beep! Hurry up, Gordon. The train's ready. Gordon thought he was late. Laughed Percy and showed him a train of dirty coal cars. Next, it was James's turn. Stay in the shed today, James. Sir Topham Hatt will come and see you. Percy had wisely disappeared. When Sir Topham Hatt came back, he was cross with James and Percy for causing so much trouble. I say, you engines. I'm to take some freight cars to Thomas's junction. Sir Topham Hatt chose me especially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. Percy felt flattered. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James, said Percy. I know all about signals. Percy was a little worried. I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. And I'll manage. 
he puffed crossly to his freight cars and felt better. He came to a signal. Bother! It's a danger. Down means go, and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. I know. It's one of those backing signals. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Off we go. Stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal, Percy protested and told him about Gordon and James. Oh, dear, said Percy. Let's start quickly before they see us. He was too late. That night, the big engines talked about signals. They thought the subject was funny. Percy thought they were being very silly. What? Asked Percy. What? Grunted Gordon. Do you know what? Sir Topham Hatt says that the work in the yard is too heavy for me. He's getting a bigger engine to help me. Percy went off to fetch some coaches. That stupid old signal, he thought. He was remembering the time he'd misunderstood a signal and gone backwards instead of forwards. No one listens to me now. They think I'm a silly little engine and order me about. I'll show them. I'll show them. But he didn't know how. He brought some coaches to the station. Yes, sir. I am, sir. I don't know if I'm standing on my dome or on my wheels. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The two engines went off together. Soon, they were very busy. Percy was cross, but Duck took no notice. Yes, they do, answered Percy. He whispered something. We'll do it later. Whee! Duck and Percy calmly sat on the switches outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Stop that noise, bellowed Sir Topham Hatt. Beg pardon, sir, but I'm a great Western engine. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior to Gordon, Henry, and James sniggered. It is quite right. This is my railway, and I give the orders. Sometimes he'd see Thomas. An airfield was close by. Percy heard the airplane zooming overhead all day. Silly thing, said Percy. Why can't it go and buzz somewhere else? Hello, said Percy. Who are you? I'm Harold. I'm Percy. What whirly great arms you've got. They're nice arms, said Harold. I can hover like a bird. Certainly not. I like my rails, thank you. I Percy found Toby at the quarry. I say, Toby, that Harold, that stuck-up whirlybird thing, says I'm slow and out of date. Just let him wait. I'll show him. He collected his freight cars and started off still fuming. Soon they heard a familiar buzzing. Percy, whispered his driver. Yes, let's, said Percy. Percy pounded along. The car screamed and swayed. There was Harold. The race was on. Go it, Percy, he yelled. You're gaining. Percy had never been allowed to run fast before. He was having the time of his life. Hurry, 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 he panted to the cars. Percy was bucketing along with flying wheels, and Harold was high and alongside. Fireman shoveled for dear life. Well done, Percy, shouted the driver. We're gaining. We're going ahead. Oh, good boy, good boy. Beep, beep, beep. Brakes, conductor, please. They rolled under the main line and halted on the wharf. 
Oh, dear, groaned Percy. I'm sure we've lost. The firemen scrambled to the cab roof. Your railway is out of date and not much use, you know. But Percy and his stone cars did the trip in record time. And we beat the helicopter on our old branch line. Percy loved it. Oh, thank you, he said. He liked the last line best of all and was a very happy engine. When Thomas came back, Annie and Clarabelle told him how well Duck had managed. Thomas was so pleased to be home that he... It was raining hard. Water swirled under my boiler. I couldn't see where I was going, but I struggled on. Well, it wasn't anything, really. Water's nothing to an engine with determination. Go away. They're not silly. Percy had been enjoying himself. Anyway, said Cheeky Percy, I'm not afraid of water. I like it. He ran off to the harbor singing. Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. Thomas was looking at the board on the key. Hi. I can't see a mine, said Percy. He didn't know that the foundations of the key had sunk. The rails now sloped downward to the sea. Stupid board, said Percy. He made a plan. One day, he whispered to the cars, will you give me a bump when we get to the key? The cars had never been asked to bump an engine before. They giggled and chatted about it. Driver doesn't know my plan, chuckled Percy. On, 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 laughed the cars. I'll pretend to stop at the station, but the cars will push me past the board. Then I'll make them stop. I can do that whenever I like. Every wise engine knows you cannot trust freight cars. Ow! said Percy, sliding past the board. Percy was frantic. That's enough! Percy was sunk. Percy knew that voice. Please, sir, get me out, sir. I'm truly sorry, sir. Yes, sir. It was dark when they brought floating cranes to rescue Percy. He was too cold and stiff to move by himself. No. I am surprised. You need more determination, Percy. Water's nothing to an engine with determination, you know. Percy is quite determined that there won't be a next time. He purred smoothly towards them. Sir Topham had introduced him. The silly engines were flattered. He has very good manners, they murmured. We're pleased to have him in our yard. The engines are sorry and want you back. Henry was very grateful. He saw all was not well. The twins a shame, said Percy. A lot. Percy decided to talk to Edward about it. What you need, said Edward, is a deputation. Hand back quickly. Edward says we need a, a depot station. Of an engines tell Sir Topham Hatt something's wrong, said Percy. squeaked Percy. I can't. Rubbish, Percy, said Henry. It's easy. That sucks. He wished it wasn't. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. You look, sir. Uh, they've, they've made me a desperation, sir. Uh, to, to speak to you, sir. I, I don't like it, sir. Sir Topham, please, sir. Uh, it's Donald and Douglas. They say, sir, that if you send them away, sir, w well, they'll be turned into scrap, sir. That would be dreadful, sir. Uh, please, sir, don't send them away. Topham Hatt spoke to the engines. The twins were here to stay. Driver says I don't need him now. Don't be so daft, snorted Percy. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver said I could manage without him. 
I'll just go out and then I'll stop and wheesh. That'll make them jump. The cleaner had meddled with his controls. He just kept rolling along. I know, sir. I'm sorry, sir. You must go to the works and have your front mended. A, a, a d diesel, sir? T Percy and Toby were worried. Thomas's recent accident had caused a great deal of trouble, and Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for them with important news. Please, sir, will she go when Thomas comes back, sir? Yes, sir. We'll try, sir, said the engines. Good. Run along now and show her the shed. Daisy was not easy to please. She shuddered at the engine shed. And anything smelly is bad for my swerve. Next, they tried the carriage shed. Percy and Toby had to take them away and spend half the night soothing their hurt feelings. ...woke next morning feeling exhausted. Daisy, on the other hand, felt bright and cheerful. Woo -woo, woo -woo. She tooted as she came out of the yard and back to the station. One day, Toby brought Henrietta to the station where Percy was grumpily shunting. Hello, Percy. I see Daisy's left the milk behind again. I'll have to make a special journey with it, I suppose. Anyone would think I'd nothing to do, grumbled Percy. Drivers and station master agreed. Percy had never been to the quarry before. He began ordering the freight cars about. Hurry along, he said. Come along, puffed Percy. No nonsense. But they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were under control. Suddenly, they saw a notice ahead. Beep, beep. Brakes, conductor, please. But before he could check them, the freight car surged ahead. Frantically trying to grip the rails, Percy slid into the yard. Beep, beep. Look out. The brake van was in smithereens. Percy's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Percy was stranded. Percy remained on his perch of freight cars. I am sorry, sir. You must stay there till we are ready, continued Sir Topham Hatt. Percy sighed. The freight cars groaned beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. And Percy was sent to be mended. What are you talking about? The ghost train. Driver saw it last night. Where? Asked Thomas and Toby. He didn't say. Oh, it makes my wheels wobble to think of it. P Thomas didn't believe in your ghost, said Percy next morning. Percy was disappointed. That evening, he came back from the harbor. Percy knew where he was, even in the dark. Crow's Farm Crossing. We shan't be long now. He liked running at night. The rails hummed and the signal light shone green. Percy broke the cart to smithereens. Lime flew everywhere. Percy's driver explained what had happened think he is a ghost. Percy chuckled. Do let's pretend I'm a ghost and scare Thomas. That'll teach him to say I'm a silly little engine. enjoying himself enormously. He had heard everything.
Well, 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 what do you know about that? Anyone would think, chuckled Toby, that our Thomas had just seen a ghost. This time of year, Percy stops where they have been cutting. Percy gave a ghostly whistle. Don't be frightened, Thomas, he laughed. It's only me. You're like ugly indeed. I'm green caterpillar with red stripes. You crawl like one too. I don't. It's the hay. I can't help that, said Thomas. Time's time. Green caterpillar indeed, fumed Percy, as he set off to collect some hay to take to the harbor, or at least nearly everyone. Anyway, my curves are better than Thomas's corners. Thomas says I'm always late, he grumbled. I'm never late, or at least only a few minutes. What's that to Thomas? He can always catch up time further on. Then came trouble. <laughs> A crate of treacle was upset all over Percy. Percy was cross. He was still sticky when he puffed away. The wind was blowing fiercely. Look at that, exclaimed the driver. The line climbed here. Take a run at it, Percy, his driver advised. Percy gathered speed, but the hay made the rails slippery and his wheels wouldn't grip. Time after time, he stalled with spinning wheels and had to wait till the line ahead was cleared before he could start again. Sorry I'm late, Percy panted. What's wrong? asked Percy. Talk about hairy caterpillars, puffed Thomas. It's worth being late to have seen you. As he got home, his driver showed him what he looked like in a mirror. Bust my buffers. No wonder they all laughed. I'm just like a woolly bear. Please clean me before Toby comes. Instead of talking about sensible things like playing ghost, they laughed a lot. But Percy thought they were really being very silly indeed. Sir Topham Hatt wanted this year's carol party to be an extra special celebration. One, two, three! Suddenly, like magic, the station was flooded with lights. Percy and Toby smiled. They knew who it was. It's no fun getting stuck in the snow, whispered Thomas to Percy, but it was worth it for this party. Down means go, and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. <laughs>